Today we're going to discuss how we use commas when we have multiple items in a series. So items in a series, we use commas to separate different items in a series. I'm sure you've seen this before. The number of commas is one fewer than the number of items in a series. And this will make sense in a moment. Think if you have five different items listed in a sentence, you need four commas to separate them. If you have three items, you need two commas to separate them. In other words, however many items in the series, whether it's adjectives, whether it's uh, you know different independent clauses, again, you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. If you have three items in the series, you only need to have two commas in the sentence. You'll see what I'm talking about. So let me show you some examples. All of my cousins, aunts, and uncles came to our family reunion. Right? We have three items in the series, cousins, aunts, and uncles. So if we have three items, we need at least two commas in the sentence. So we're going to separate the different items in the series with commas. So the items in the series are cousins, aunts, and uncles. So we put a comma after cousins and a comma after aunts. Three items, two commas. Take a look at this next example. I had chicken, potato, broccoli, and cauliflower for dinner last night. Think how many different items are in this series. Take a moment and look at it and figure it out. Well, hopefully at this point you've realized there are four items in that series. Chicken, potatoes, broccoli, and cauliflower. So if we have four items, think about how many commas are we going to use. Again, hopefully you said three, and we put them after the items in the series. So we'd have one after chicken, after potatoes, and after broccoli. Hannah, Brooke, Sam, and Carly will be coming to extra help. At this point, you should be getting the hang of this. How many items do we have in the series? Right, Hannah, Brooke, Sam, and Carly. Four items, so how many commas are we going to use? Hopefully you're thinking three. And where would they go? Well, after Hannah, after Brooke, and after Sam. All right, here's another thing to remember with items in a series. If items in a series are joined by and, or, or nor, we do not use commas to separate them. So look at this example. I need tacks and nails and a hammer. In this case, we don't need any commas because we have and separating the items in the series. Sam or Dan or Kevin will be able to babysit tomorrow. Again, the ors in between Sam or Dan and Dan or Kevin eliminate the need for commas in the sentence. So in that case, again, we don't need commas. Neither horses nor elephants nor giraffes are carnivorous. Again, we have three items there, but since they're separated by nor, we don't need to use commas in that series. When you have short independent clauses, those may be separated by commas as well. Remember independent clauses? A subject, a verb, a complete thought, that makes it an independent clause. When you have short independent clauses in a sentence, those may be separated by commas. The engine roared, the wheels spun, and a cloud of dust swirled behind the car. There's three different independent clauses in that sentence. See if you can identify them. Again, look for a subject, a verb, and a complete thought. There's three of them in there. Hopefully you've ended up with the engine roared as one, the wheels spun as another, and the last one, a cloud of dust swirled behind the car. Each one of those is an independent clause, and since we have three independent clauses in this series, we need two commas. Think about where they're going to go. They're going to go at the end of the independent clause. So what's the first independent clause? Hopefully you said the engine roared, so we put a comma there. The next independent clause, right, the wheels spun, so we put a comma there. We have three items in that series, the engine roared, the wheels spun, a cloud of dust swirled behind the car. We have three independent clauses, so we need two commas. We use commas to separate two or more adjectives preceding a noun. In other words, if you have multiple adjectives that modify a noun, and keep this in mind because it gets a little tricky, if the adjectives are modifying a noun, we separate them with commas. 
Are you going to the hot, crowded, noisy mall? Identify the adjectives in this sentence. Hopefully you've got hot, crowded, and noisy as the adjectives. All of those words, hot, crowded, and noisy, which word are they modifying? In other words, what in that sentence are hot, crowded, and noisy describing? Well, hopefully you realize that all three of those are describing the mall. So we have to separate those with commas because, again, all three of those adjectives are modifying the mall. They're telling us more about the mall. It's a hot mall. It's a crowded mall. It's a noisy mall. We could mix those up and it wouldn't change the meaning of the sentence. It's, are you going to the noisy, crowded, hot mall? Are you going to the crowded, noisy, hot mall? Are you going to the noisy, hot, crowded mall? In other words, we can mix all of the adjectives up and they're still just telling us more about the mall. So those items we have to separate with commas. Hot and crowded. Again, three adjectives in the series. We use two commas. It was a sunny, bright, beautiful day. Again, three adjectives there that are all telling us more about what? The day. So we have three adjectives. We have to separate them with commas. A comma after sunny and a comma after bright. The ice cream was cold, creamy, and delicious. All three of those words are telling us more about the ice cream. Again, we could play with the order of them, and it's not going to change the meaning of the sentence. The ice cream was creamy, delicious, and cold. The ice cream was delicious, cold, and creamy. All three of those words are telling us more about the ice cream. So we separate those with commas after cold and after creamy. Here's where it gets a little tricky. Compound nouns like dining rooms and fruit tree, they're considered single units, and the words act as one part of speech, so we don't, we don't need commas there. But here's what I'm talking about. If one of the words modifies another modifier, you don't separate those two words with commas. What do I mean by that? Well, look at this sentence. The dark blue bag was very old. Right? The two adjectives here are dark and blue. But think about it. Blue is modifying what? In other words, which word is telling us about the bag? Blue. The bag is blue. Dark, on the other hand, is dark modifying the bag? No, dark is modifying blue. In other words, it's telling us more about blue, not the bag. So in this case, dark modifies blue and blue modifies bag. We don't have to separate those with commas because, again, they're not all modifying the same noun. In this case, dark is modifying the adjective blue and blue is modifying the bag. Hopefully this makes sense to you. If you have any questions, please email me. We'll work on a couple of examples at the start of class tomorrow. Have a good night.